What's going on, everyone? Jeremy here from The Quartering. I hope you're having a wonderful day. It is Tuesday, January 17th. Lots of news today. I've got the Crowder situation covered on the channel. I've got some Twitter lawsuit stuff. I've got all sorts of things. So I hope if you're enjoying the content today that you'll leave a like down below and you'll consider subscribing. I would absolutely love to earn your subscription today. Now, I want to talk about Hogwarts Legacy. It is a game that I have now begrudgingly pre-ordered. And uh, it, I, don't, I say that not because I wasn't excited to play the game, because I am, but because I really don't like pre-ordering. I really don't like pre-ordering stuff to like own the libs. I think you should just wait. I think the general good advice for my viewers would be, you know, unless, you know, unless your mind's already made up, there's really no value in pre-ordering. And, you know, Lord knows I've been burned before by pre-orders. In particular, Cyberpunk uh, 2077 comes to mind. But one of the biggest nothing burgers on the internet today is that there's some sort of, some like actual controversy around Hogwarts Legacy. There absolutely is not. It's fake. It's manufactured. And I will prove you these things through data and actual unemotional responses. By the way, I want to thank everybody who's been supportive of coffee, brandcoffee.com. Just want to remind people, this is my product, my company. We have probably a dozen different coffees. We're getting close to some. We just sold out of eggnog. We've got a few of the white chocolate cranberry spice left. Um, and that's their holiday coffees will be off. Obviously, we've got our delicious dark roast and non-flavored coffees. We've got a dozen organic teas. A lot of people don't know. And our teas review extraordinarily well. Uh, we're getting the Earl Grey and the Masala Chai back in stock soon. And today will be the last day to get the peppermint hot cocoa. If you've been thinking about trying our cocoa, I highly recommend it. It's on sale. And also the HC001, also a personal favorite of mine. Now, Hogwarts Legacy is a game that is getting the push of the fake controversy like I've never seen before. Here we have Jake Lucky, who's basically an internet tattletale, talking about the biggest controversy in gaming right now is somehow people deciding to buy or not buy Hogwarts Legacy because it's supporting J.K. Rowling and her transphobic comments. Never seen so many people divided over a video game purchase. Well, that's just not true. There's This is the video game community, bro. You must be new here. Uh, it's absolutely. I mean, how about The Last of Us 2? Not that long ago. Um, you see him highlighting tweets from the act man saying, if you buy Hogwarts Legacy or... Harry Potter, you're automatically a transphobe. That's like saying if you've ever played a Blizzard game, you're automatically a fan of harassment. Where the F do people come up with these scar scarlet brain rot takes? Scarlet brain rot takes. I'm not familiar with that terminology. Then you see this, Tyler. I'm just not playing. Just not playing the game is not enough. I will be actively standing outside of GameStop at midnight release of Hogwarts Legacy, throwing rocks at people. Stop talking about it. Be about it. Now, I assume this is a joke. If not, he can roll up on my GameStop anytime and throw rocks and see how that goes for him. Sarah Daniels, from someone who is literally a poster child for Hogwarts School Choir at Universal Studios, if, you, if I cannot buy Hogwarts Legacy, so can you. It literally is just that easy. It's one of the best, most memorable parts of my life. But JK Rowling is hardly harming people I care about. She isn't. J.K. Rowling believes that biology is real. That doesn't harm people. Freddles writes, I'm really going to burn some bridges with this Hogwarts legacy stuff. Trans rights are human rights. Yes, so? That's not, bro, like this 2023, you're not getting any likes and retweets for that. If you, can, if you cannot not play a game in support of an entire demographic, then your actions speak louder than words. I mean, cringe. Imagine losing friends over this. And you see a lot of these people, right? Here's Brittany Johnson. J.K. Rowling did not design code, draw the art for the game. Hundreds of people who put time, blood, sweat, and tears in developing that game did and should not have to suffer. Like, and then you see this kind of moronic take. Do what you want, but note that people arguing are dominantly straight white males. 
and the ones getting offended, the people that are just asking for you not to. Now, I'm going to buy two copies of the game, um, absolutely, because this fake outrage is so ridiculous. Uh, I don't know how any of these people actually, like, can they, well, by the way, again, let me be very clear. First of all, there are plenty of trans people that are going to play this video game. Okay, there are plenty of trans people who don't give a crap about any of this, the drama, right? Here's Sophia Narwitz, a trans individual and video game reporter. Uh, the monolith that is trans people, TM, have asked us not to play it, LOL. But if you really, but really, you're not as virtuous, <laughs> you're not as virtuous as you're pretending to be. You choose this battle because it's already a product you're not interested in. Let me know when you actually choose a fight that'll be rough for you. And that's exactly the point I'm making. They weren't interested in the game anyway. You see Freddles exposed right here. Surely just do what you want, right? Trans people all over social media in real life who live in the United States and the kingdom have asked for us not to play it. No, not a single trans person has asked me not to play it. I listen rather than getting upset about it uh, that I cannot play a game that I want. Then he writes, I'm a streamer. Playing newly released games with the interest of gaining more viewers is literally my career. Except he writes, Hogwarts was never part of my childhood, to be honest. I listened to the audiobooks a few years ago and they were only okay. So some writes, so you're only mild, you're interested in the game, if at all, and you expect us to think you're making some great sacrifice by not playing it. That's exactly my point. Even you get like, uh, that super mega brain Keemstar who's just trolling, bro, about not playing the game. Like, it takes zero uh, 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 sacrifice to not play a game that you weren't interested in playing in the first place. And also understand this. You have Sebastian Croft apologize to Vince, hurt by his involvement in the new Harry Potter video game. Oh, did he return his money? Get out of here. And like, what's hilarious about this is J.K. Rowling made $20 million this year and it had nothing to do with Hogwarts Legacy. It has a lot to do with the theme parks and licensing. J.K. Rowling is rich beyond any of us, any of us could possibly fathom and will always be that way. You not playing a video, and by the way, if you don't wanna get, if you have like a principal thing where you don't wanna give money to J.K. Rowling, I respect that. You could still play the game on the secondary market. I'm sure people will play through the game in a couple of weeks and you'll be able to get it 30, 40, 50% off at GameStop. And then your money's not going to JK Rowling, right? So if you want to play the game and you happen to be trans or somebody who thinks they're standing up for trans people by not playing the game, you can just buy it on the secondary market and JK Rowling's not getting any of your money. But you want to know again how this is how I know it's all bologna sausage with cheese? Hogwarts Legacy is already the number one selling game on Steam and PS5. Number two on Xbox. I wonder what number is one. The game isn't even out for a month. And it's the number one selling game on Steam. Part of me thinks that this is all just marketing. That like, it's just a op, right? To like get people worked up to, to buy it. We are just under four weeks away from the release of Hogwarts Legacy on February 10th, but it's already shaping up to be one of the best selling games of the year. Well, now it's February, so it's early, but it's already shaping up to be the year. Pre-sales for Hogwarts Legacy have been absolutely unbelievable, and it shows no sign of slowing down as we get closer to launch. But what about all those boycotts? What about all those people that were not? What about the 30, 50, 60,000 people that all liked that tweet that they weren't playing the game in solidarity with trans people? They were never interested in the game in the first place, or they're lying. Hogwarts Legacy has retained its top spot as the best-selling game on Steam. CSGO is higher in revenue, but that's a free-to-play title with microtransactions. Legacy is outselling the next closest actual paid game, Modern Warfare 2, by a good margin, according to the chart. Now, Modern Warfare 2 has been out for a minute. Hogwarts Legacy is listed on Amazon as the top-selling game on the PS5 right now, ahead of upcoming Dead Space remake, out in 11 days and Sonic Frontiers. Hogwarts Legacy is listed on Amazon as the number two seller in Xbox series behind only Modern Warfare 2. 
One exception to Hogwarts Legacy's dominance is on the Switch, where it's listed as just the 33rd best-selling game on Switch on Amazon, behind dozens of other titles. The reason being for that is the Switch version of the game won't be out until the middle of summer, as the port there needs more time, apparently. Unlike upcoming big 2023 release, Starfield, Spider-Man 2, Final Fantasy 16, and The Legend of Zelda, Tears of the Kingdom, Hogwarts Legacy is releasing on all platforms as a third-party title. Other big title games this year, like Diablo 4 and The Squad, uh, but it seems possible that Hogwarts Legacy could literally beat them all. And by the way, like buying the game and playing the game doesn't make you automatically support every opinion that J.K. Rowling's ever had. It's ridiculous to think that. But it's also ridiculous to fall for this complete fake narrative that it isn't going to be one of the top-selling games of the year. Now, I don't want to tell people to go spend their money to own the libs. I don't think that's a good idea. Me, I pre-ordered it because now I'm going to play it on launch because, well, it's not a bad way to make a living, you know. But, you know, you could wait a couple days and see if the game's actually good. And, you know, it's still a lot of money, 60 or $70, depending on which version you want to buy. So, you know, a lot of people have backlogs, myself included. I still have Witcher 3 to finish. I still have Cyberpunk 2077 to finish. I have so much, but I guess I'm adding that to my palette in February for weekend streams. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you leave a like on it and make sure if you haven't yet, please do subscribe down below wherever you're watching the video and we'll talk to you again real soon.